In your presence we come alive In your glory we come alive In your glory we come alive We need you You We your cry. We need you. We want you. We want you. No one else can do. We need you. Nothing else can do. We want you. We want you. Nothing else we matters. Want you. We want you. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. Jehovah. Just need 50 worshipers that are drowning out the spectators. Come on. Just 50. All I need is 50. 50 people that's wait, not waiting to feel something. He don't have to do nothing else. He's already gave us all we need. How he washed us, how he saved us. And he cleansed us, yes, he loves us. All I need is 50 that are worship in spite of everything, that are give your praise, that are lift your voice. We want you. Yes, we see you. I can sense you. We want you. We won't go. We 
need you Won't you Let everything else fade Let everyone else drift away And I will stay here In your presence You're all I need You're all I want Nothing else matters, nothing else matters 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 Won't you? Need you? See you? Nothing else matters Well, I'm lost There's nothing else to do but Be in His presence, you can carry this home We're done I like that tune Just the look in your eyes Flaming like fire Brightly Feet like breasts Face like Hair like wool to do we didn't do anything but one song and worship we need less songs and more worship anyway yes. won't you how I need you you're with us never leave us nor fail us Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good to see you guys on. Thank you for all of our visitors and those who are here uh, in the Zoom room and those who are watching Facebook Live. We want to welcome you uh, to Refresh the City Church. This is our virtual uh, Sunday, and we are ex we are so excited that you guys have decided to join us uh, for our Sunday worship. All of the uh, information that you want to uh, see as relates to our giving is on the screen. Uh, but I always like to open with the word of prayer uh, as we begin. So Father, we thank you, God, hallelujah, uh, for what you're going to do, uh, what you're going to say through the vessel this morning. And Father, we yield our hearts and our minds to you. And Father, I will cry, I'll cry God, is to have your way, hallelujah. As the song says, we see you, we need you, and we want you, hallelujah. So Father, our hearts are postured and positioned uh, to receive the bread of life this morning. God, as you go and minister to us this morning. So God, have your way, God, in Jesus' name. Again, welcome uh, to Refresh City. Uh, we, we thank you guys for joining us. Listen, before we get all the way in there, invite a friend, uh, tag some of you friends and family members, tell them, come on. Uh, we believe there's a word from the Lord. We know there's a word from the Lord. God has spoken to us. We are continuing our month of stewardship. I mean, God has been blessing us richly with our month of stewardship. Every Wednesday, if you can't join us, uh, we're doing financial classes because we got to learn how to steward our finances. Amen. Uh, more information on that later. But as you prepare the way uh, for the word of the Lord, uh, the word is coming today from one of our very own, uh, Pastor Leslie Krigmer. Uh, she has, uh, she is anointed vessel of God, a woman of faith, power, and of courage. Uh, we pray for her as she released the word of the Lord, that you guys encourage her and engage with her in the comments. 
uh, and you know, in the chat, all that. So we know we can't hear you, you know, but help the preacher. Amen. Let's help her out, uh, giving us, showing us some love. And we're so, so godly grateful uh, that she has said yes uh, to the call this morning. And so, Leslie, Pastor Leslie, may God bless you. May the power of the Lord be upon you as you minister the word of the Lord. Amen. Come on, guys, let's welcome her as she comes on. Glory be to God. Have your way, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Shamal, Pastor Aisha. I appreciate this opportunity and I am so excited. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dive right in. As our pastor mentioned, we have been uh, teaching on stewardship. <clears throat> and so we started on our finances. And so today God has taken us to um, time, how to steward our time. What is time? And so we're going to just get into the word of the Lord as he has given it on today. And I just thank, I thank God again for this opportunity. Um, so we talked about stewardship. And so we know stewardship is the job of supervising or taking care of something such as an organization, a property. Um, we talk about in, in biblical terms, time, talent, and treasure. And so we know that everything that we have um, dominion over, it really belongs to God. He is just allowing us to steward it. And so first getting an understanding that we are stewards and we're supervising everything that God has given us. And we are supervising and we're taking care of it. But we know that there is an owner. We know that that owner is God. Proverbs 24 and 1 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The, word, the world and all its people belong to him. So that includes, includes our time. And so we're, we are just stewarding that and we know that it belongs to the father. And so he gives us instructions on how we need to do that. And so we wanna take an introspective look at ourselves to see how we are doing with that um, because it is a mandate for us to follow the biblical principles of God as we are stewarding all that the father has given us. So. Time, according to man, is the indefinite continued progress of existence and its events in the past, in the present, and the future regarding as a whole. So that's what we consider time. Time is a precious commodity. It's something that we, we are not able to get back. Once you lose that time, it is gone. Um, when we know that on our jobs, there is a way that we are compensated for our time, right? Um, so we put time in, we work, we put our hours in, and then we receive a paycheck on whatever that pay date is. And so that's our expectation. I'm going to give, and we're not, I don't even want to say so, but I'm going to give my time to my employer with the expectation that I'm going to be compensated for that. So that is man's conversion. They created that conversion of time. So that's what we do on our jobs, right? But then there's a Greek word, two Greek words that we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, the first one is chronos. And chronos, time is considered the minutes, the seconds, the hours. Um, we express that time. The time is slipping away. Um, the women talk about their internal, internal biological clocks are ticking away, that I need to get married. I need to have a baby because I'm getting older. So that is the man's uh, system of time. And so, but then there's another Greek word, kairos. And the kairos is the right or appointed time of God. It's God's timing. It's powerful and it's right. It's fixed by him and it's to be used for his purpose. And so we want to make sure that we are in the kairos timing of God. Um, but then there, uh, but what it, what it, what if it became, if we became diligent, if we became diligent and watchful, what if we were stewards and watchmen over the time that God has given us? Um, Second Peter 3, 8 through 9, it says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. As some understand slowness, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So God has a Kairos timing, a timing of when Jesus Christ is coming back for us, his elect. Um, there's a timing um, of, of things that are happening in the earth. 
And so as we are becoming stewards of our time, we want to make sure that we are in the right timing of God so that we don't miss the opportunity, not just for the promise here on earth, but the promise for the hereafter, because we want to see the Lord, right? And we want to take people with us when we cross over into the, to, to the fullness of Christ after we leave here. And so we want to make sure that we are walking in that timing of God. Now, I thought, you know, maybe we were just going to talk about time management. You know, I was going to talk a little bit about time management and how you need to be a good steward over your time and how um, we need to make sure that we are being uh, prepared and equipped. But God wanted to go a little deeper. He wants us to understand the Kairos timing of God, not just the Kronos, not just the, the timing on the clock, the hour. It is the hour of God. And he wants us to understand it. it is imperative where we are right now in this season as believers. And I'm so excited because we received the word of the Lord by our, um, our pastor today. Um, and I'm not going to go into the word, but we received a word of the Lord from him. And sometimes when we feel when there is a warning, sometimes we get oh, well, God, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was in the right place with God. But I thank God for the warning because I don't. I know God is not going to allow us to continue walking in a way that is not uh, befitting to the kingdom of God. And so when the warning comes, warning comes before destruction. Now we hear the warning. We need to adhere to the warning. And so this, I believe, is also us um, God is asking us to take a look at where we are when it comes to uh, the timing of God and how we are stewarding and taking care of the things that he has promised us during this season. So I thank God for the warning on this morning. I thank God that he is using this time for us to really take a look at our hearts to see where we are. Okay, so I, our error is that we attempt to measure God's timing against the world system. So we think uh, because it's a month, it's a year that God has to fall within that timing. And he does it because it says that his timing is not our timing. And so we're error. We are in error if we think that God is aligned with the clock on your wall or the calendar on your wall. He is not. That is not his timing. Amen. We're not. God is not bound by any timing. He is timing. He created time. And so he is not subject to what it is that we think he should do. Amen. So this weekend, I had an opportunity to uh, stay at a residence where there was a home monitoring system. And so when you activate the alarm, you have 60 seconds before it engages and it locks down the home. And so I wanted to make sure within that 60 seconds, so I, I put the alarm on and I began to make sure the doors were locked, the kids were in, the dogs were in. So as I were, was moving about in that 60 seconds, I felt as though I was being rushed, like I was about to run out of time. But then the next time we did it again, myself and the children, we watched the countdown of the clock of the yeah the timer the alarm we went from 60 on to zero now that time seemed like it was extended because we were watching the time we were watching the countdown and that's where many of us are when i was busy moving about the house making sure everything was locked down that minute seemed extended or i it seemed like it wasn't enough but when we were watching the time it felt like it was longer. So God says, as you are sitting and you said the scripture, they that wait on the Lord, we take that out of context. We say, God, I'm waiting on you. But God says, what if you wait with me? When you wait with me, that becomes I'm waiting with God. That becomes an action word. I-N-G added onto anything gives you action. So when you're waiting on God, God has given you instructions in the wait and the time does not seem so extended because you're still busy and you're doing what God is calling you to do. You are about your father's business, even in the wait. So you don't notice the clock. You don't notice the calendar. You don't notice what is happening. You're waiting, but I'm waiting with God. Amen. Amen. All right. 
We're going to go a little further. What if we took the timing of God more seriously? And as we said, became stewards, became watchmen. I'm going to watch. Nehemiah said, I'm watching, I'm fighting, and I'm praying. He was a watchman of the time. God gave him an assignment to rebuild the wall. He was rebuilding that wall. And so when people came to distract him, he told him, I can't come down because I'm doing a great work. He was very efficient when it came to his time. He was watchful of his time. He would not allow anybody to distract us. When we are doing the father's business, we have to be very mindful of our time. This is God's time. You don't know how long he's given you to do the work, but you have to be committed. You have to be faithful. You have to be bold and watchful in utilizing and using the time that God is given. So don't allow yourself to be distracted by what's happening in the world because they're on a different timetable. They're not on God's timetable. We're on God's timetable. So don't allow them to dissuade you. Don't allow them to discourage you. Don't allow them to distract you and pull you away from the promise that you are working on with the father. Amen. So it says in Proverbs 16 and nine, a person plans his way, but the Lord directs his paths. Timing, by definition, is the choice, the judgment, or the control of when something should be done. That's what the definition of timing is, worldly definition. But when we look again at God, there's no control. We don't have control over the timing of God. And that is what will distract us. That is what will pull us away is because we think the intent in which the word time stands in, we can utilize that. And what it does is it delays us because we are comparing it to the timing of God. We allow ourselves to be distracted because we think we know how God is moving. We think we know what God is doing. Now he will, of course, God will share Share it with the prophets. He will give us a word, but the timing of God, because he, he even says, no man knows the hour nor the day when he is coming back. We don't know when that is. He's given us some parameters or what we can see that is coming near. We know that the, near, the timing is near, but we don't know when the day is. So we're gonna continue to work while it's day. We're gonna continue to do what the father is calling us to do in that timing, amen? And God had given me back in March of 2021, this is just a testimonial, in March of 2021, God told me to prepare to move from Texas to Maryland. Well, he had, I, I had felt that coming for a long time, many times before, but never such the urgency that it came. And so I prepared to move, gave my notice, and I moved uh, on November the 8th, I stepped foot and I arrived in Maryland. On November, I mean, on December the 12th, my dad had a stroke. And I believe it was April, I believe April of 2022, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. But at that time, because God had prepared me and it was the Kairos timing of God for me to move, I was in the, the same state with my family when these devastating events occurred in our lives. And so if I had not been there, yes, I would have had to fly there, maybe take some PTO time, um, do all of these things that were probably inconvenient. But God says, I want you to be there. I want you to be there living with your family. Now, I didn't know any of this was occurring, but somebody say the timing of God the Kairos timing of God. And so with the timing of God, there has to be obedience. And God said, I will use the foolish things to confound the wise. It may look foolish. I didn't have a job yet. I moved there without having a job. So some people would say, oh, well, yeah, you had your family there. So it was okay. You was comfortable. It's not for me to be comfortable to live with my family without having a job. That's just not how I roll. I need to have a job to sustain myself, regardless of who I'm staying with. 
But because I followed the direction of what God had given me, I had to move in his timing. I couldn't wait till things were comfortable. I couldn't wait till things lined up. Now, God is going to make the crooked path straight. He told us that. That's a promise in his word. But we don't wait until that happens before we move. We walk in faith and not in fear. And so when God gives us something to do, we move in the faith of God. And then we see the promise, but we don't wait until we see it in our natural because our natural can distract us. Our natural can deceive us. We walk by faith and we see it through our spiritual eyes. So when God says, move now, I had to move. I did not know what was ahead, but I thank God that I obeyed the Kairos timing of God and I uprooted myself so that I can be in the presence of my family when we went through what we went through. Kairos time, timing of God. And I'm sure many of you have many uh, instances where this may have occurred in your life, but we have to take the timing, the Kairos timing of God as if our life depends on it because it does. We don't know what's outside of that timing. So we have to follow what the Lord has given us to do. Obey the Lord. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. And so in this season, a lot of us are misappropriating time. We're putting time in the wrong place. Um, we're devaluing the timing of God because we don't understand what God is doing and saying with his timing. And so we want to make sure that as we are, we talked about in uh, Isaiah 40, 31, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. faint. And so we talked about that. That's the timing of God when we're waiting on God and waiting with God. His strength, your strength is being renewed. We are mounting up like eagles. We're going to begin to run and not be weary. And we're not going to faint. We're going to walk in what God is calling us to do. But that's that, that moment, that 60 seconds that I talked about when um, I put on the alarm. That's that timing right there. It's crucial that we are sitting with God during that waiting period. When you go to the doctor's office, and, I, and sometimes when we go, we may have a scheduled appointment. It may be one o'clock, but how many of you know that they do not call your name at one o'clock? You're gonna sit in that waiting room and you're gonna wait until maybe 1.30, 1.45, sometimes two o'clock. But when you're sitting there, what are you doing with your time? Are you utilizing your time properly? Are you stewarding your time? When you're sitting in that waiting room, do you look at the magazines that they have about cosmopolitan and all these worldly things that are going to do no earthly good to the spirit man? But do you have your Bible, your cards with your scriptures on them? Do you have your, uh, your devotional book? Are you listening to your message that your pastor preached the previous Sunday or the previous week? What are you doing with your time? Now that's the chronos time. We waste that too. The chronos, the clock, what's happening on the clock, what's happening on the calendar. That is the chronos time. What are you doing with that? Are you stewarding that time well? Because what happens is by the end of the day, I say, man, I didn't get everything done that I needed to get done. Why? You didn't steward well. Why is my list of things to do still at 10? I didn't steward it well. What am I doing with my time? How am I utilizing the time that God has given me? Am I a proper steward? This week, after we talked about the finances, the Lord had really dealt with me about stewardship and being unmarried. He said, we desire unmarried men and women. We desire to be married. We desire a spouse. God, I've been waiting for 
for this amount of years and I've been celibate and I've been keeping myself. And God says, how are you stewarding your singleness? Have you been faithful over that? God says, if you're faithful over little, I'll make you ruler over much. There are assignments that God has given us to do as single women and single men that we can only do in our singleness. But we haven't done those things yet. So God is saying, I'm not going to send a mate yet because you have not completed what I've given you to do in this season. See, we want to rush into the next season before the other season is complete. God says, no, show me faithfulness. Be faithful. We want more. We're asking God for more. But what are you doing with the 24 hours of the day that he has already given you? Are you utilizing that properly? Are you standing strong on the 24 hours? Are you being productive? If God was to give us a paycheck according to what we are giving during that time, what would you get? What would your paycheck look like? Many people are leaving jobs because they feel like they're not being properly compensated. So they're starting their own businesses. I can do more for myself if I work for myself. If I work for myself, I'll be able to generate more money. But we're not working for ourselves, people of God. Even if you are an entrepreneur, God is still the owner of that business. If you are a believer, it still belongs to God. So we still have a responsibility to steward the business that he gives us. We have a responsibility to steward the career that he's given us, the children, whatever it is that we have been giving stewardship over. God says, you have a responsibility to steward it and to steward it well, because the fruit inspector is going to come to see how you're doing with what he has given you. He says, I will come and ding, cut it down if you're not stewarding it well. And we can remember the, the men with the talents, the parable of the talents. If we don't use what God has given us. We want to bury what God has given us. He will take it away because he needs for that to get into the earth. What he has given to you, what he has given to me, he needs for that to get into the earth. He wants to use that gift for something for the kingdom, for his, for his body. And so if that is not getting into the body of Christ, into the kingdom of God, he will use it and give it to someone else because he has need of that gift that he's given you. Don't bury the time. Don't bury the time. God has given this to you to utilize it for the kingdom, for the body. And he says, don't bury it. I have need of it. There are people there are people that have need of what you are carrying, but you are delaying and putting that into practice, into position. God says, I gave you the gift. I gave you the assignment of starting the ministry. I gave you the assignment. I gave you the assignment. And he says, my children, my children have need of you and what I have given you. We are the answer to a problem in the earth. God gave us the answer and it's Jesus. Whatever the method is that he's given you, you are the answer and you have the solution. But if you're not utilizing it and you're not allowing yourself to be used in the timing of God, then there are people that are lacking because of your disobedience, because of your fear. God says, don't be fearful. Amen. And we're looking at now the, and this is a familiar story, um, the three Hebrew boys. And this is in Daniel 3, just kind of giving an a overview. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, wanted everybody to bow to the idols and worship the golden image. 
And so the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, uh, no, we're not doing that. That's not the God that we serve. We're not, we not bowing to no idols. And so um, he ordered for them to be put into the fiery furnace. And so the timing of God, and when he showed this to me, there are many times that our obedience to stand up, to do what he called us to do, is not going to be pretty. It's not going to be convenient. But God says that it takes boldness in this hour to respond to his timing. So the three Hebrew boys were bold. They said no. And they said, even if my God doesn't show up, I know that he's able. So when they put him in the fiery, put the three of them in the fiery furnace, there was a fourth person in the furnace with them. So not only, I, not only was this an example um, for them that they God showed up for the three Hebrew boys, it was an example for the, for the King Nebuchadnezzar. So your yes and your stance and the timing of God is not just an example for you that yes, I'm God and I'm able and I'm going to do it, but it's for others to see. So when you steward the timing of God and you steward and you're bold and you stand up and do what God has called you to do, it is a witness for other people to see. They're going to see your witness in the boldness that I'm taking a stand. It doesn't matter. I can lose my life, but for God, I shall live and for God, I shall die. I'm going to do this because my father in heaven called me to this place. So when we stand up for God and for righteousness, we God draw that is going to draw people to him, not to us. We just we're just a vessel. God is just using us as a conduit. God use me as a conduit to to get your anointing to flow from me through the body of Christ to those that are lost. Allow God your yes needs to be refreshed because it's become stale. It's become old. God says, I need your yes to be a yes and amen. See, we say yes to God. God, okay, I know this is the timing and I know this is what you're calling me to do. But then when it becomes uncomfortable, then when it begins to stretch us out of our comfort zone, then when it doesn't look like what I think it should look like, I begin to look as though I'm losing some things around me. My friends don't understand the walk that God is taking me on. They think that I'm making wrong decisions. People didn't understand how you're going to up and just relocate to another state and you don't even have a job. What are you doing? You're secure here. Your church family is here. Your children are here. How are you going to leave the state and leave those things behind, Abraham? Because this is what God has given me to do in this season. And I'd rather live for God and then it be uh, in the eyes of him and then to be foolish in the eyes of God and be foolish in the eyes of men. So I trust the judgment and the timing of my father. And I say yes to him. Yes to him. So now that the, the three Hebrew boys, when they said, yes, God, for you, I live and for you, I die. And they got into that furnace. Guess who was there for them? Guess who, when they came out of that furnace, they didn't even smell like smoke. God had covered them. See, we're so worried about what we're going to look like when we trust God and we walk into the timing of God that we forget the faithfulness of our father. When they followed God and they went and they allowed themselves to be put in that furnace, God covered them because he's faithful. When we're obedient, he's faithful. When we trust God, he's faithful. When we follow him, he's faithful. Amen. We're taking a stance in our boldness when it comes to the Kairos timing of God. When it comes to the timing of God. God's timing may be inconvenient because they disrupt our plan. The one we created, we created. But the Bible says in Proverbs 16, a person, again, this is a person who plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So the timing of God, there's a plan. God gives us a plan and the, uh, we need to seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, We have to seek God first. Even when we're planning our day, 
When we're planning our day, we seek God. God, what is it that you will have me to do within this 24 hour day? I need to be faithful to the listing that he has given me. Not what I wanna do in the day, but what you want to do, what you desire for me to do, God. We often get extra timing from season to season. When I went from, um, my children being younger to them getting older to them going off to college and being grown, you seem to have extra time in your schedule. But if I don't submit that timing to God, I can fill it with things that are not him. I could fill it with things that are detrimental to my spiritual growth. So instead of me filling my day, because I, I appear to have extra time because my kids are gone. I submitted that timing to God. And I said, God, what would you have me to do? I desire to please you even with my time. I can choose to go travel all over the world because I have extra time in my schedule. But would that be the will of God? I want to be sustained by the Father. So I have to be obedient to the Father. Amen. So as we look at, this is Ephesians 5, 14 through 21. And this was just the, the instructions that God had given me um, when we're following the timing of God. It says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Walk in wisdom. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. And so that first part of that scripture, God says, so as we are looking to follow the instructions of God, being in the timing of God, he says for us to awake. So to me, when he says awake and arise, that, that means that there's something that might be dead or asleep. Is my spirit man asleep, God, that I don't know the timing of God? If he's saying awake, arise. And so awake and arise and come out of those dead places. Come out of that great, the grave clothes. Come out of that place that keeps us stagnant. Arise, awake, so that we can know the timing of God. And then he says, the second part of that, be wise. Know the will of the Lord. How do I know the will of the Lord? We said it, we seek ye first the kingdom of God. When I seek the Father, I get an understanding of the timing of God. I get an understanding of who I am and what God is choosing to do with me in this season. Then it says, be sober and vigilant. I know we love that scripture, 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober and vigilant. But we want to be, I cannot be wise in my timing, I, in God's timing, I cannot follow the timing of God if I'm not sober and I'm not vigilant because the enemy is seeking around to see who he can devour. He, is a dev he devours time. He devours our time. How many of us know that we can sit and say, I'm going on social media and I'm going to um, work on my, my business. I'm going to work on my um, ministry. Um, but next thing you know, we have been scrolling for an hour. Timing has been, time has been stolen. Misappropriated our time. So when we do those things, we have to make sure we are working in the parameters of God. I'm only going on here because God wants me to post this, or I'm only going here to go live. I'm not going to scroll and to search. Using my timing right, being wise, being sober, being vigilant, because when you sit on social media, you become drunk in the things of the world because you become you begin to eat of the things that are posted on social media. And it is all not God. I don't care what what the title is. It can be doctor. It can be bishop. It can be uh, pastor. 
whatever the title is, everything that's on social media is not from God. And it, even if it's from God, it may not be the timing for you to receive it. So we have to know when we go on there, God, it's your timing. I'm only going here because this is what you sent me to do. This one or this two, how many things that you sent me to do here? So being sober, being sober, being vigilant. Then he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. We got to have the Holy Spirit if we're going to follow the timing of God. Invite him in. Father, I need Holy Spirit to be my guide. I need Holy Spirit. He brings the spirit of truth. He brings comfort. Father, I invite you to come and, and sit in my heart. Sup with me, Lord. I need you, Father. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And then it says, communicate in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs to the Lord. What do you use in your time? How do you minister to God in your time? How are you worshiping? How are you praying and how are you praising God? How are you using that timing to love on him? So it says, communicate to the father. How are you communicating with God? And then it says, give thanks, always, always give thanks. We wake up thankful because we opened up our eyes and we're on this side. We're thanking God for his glory. We're thanking him for the time that he's given us. He's thanking, we're thanking him on how to steward that time. God, thanking him for our family and what he is doing because you are so faithful, God, because of the relationship. We're thankful. We're giving him thanks at all times, even when it does not look like it's going our way. I know the three Hebrew boys in that fiery furnace, they didn't know what their end was going to be, but they were still thanking God. They still gave him glory. I know that my God is able, even if he doesn't do this, we're not on God's timetable. They didn't just expect God to just show up because he could. We have, we are not on God's timetable. So we're thanking him. We're giving him glory for all that he's doing and then submitting one to another, submitting to one another in the fear of God. How are we submitting to those that have rule over, for, rule over us? How are we submitting ourselves to authority? How are we submitting um, to the loved ones? How are we submitting um, to our spouses? How are we submitting? These are the things that God is, has said through this scripture, Ephesians 5, 14, 14 through 21, that we are um, to steward our time. This is what we are to be doing with our time. We want to arise. We want to wake up and come out of the dead places. We want to be wise. We got to know the will of the Father. We want to be sober and vigilant. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, communicate in psalms and hymns with our Father, give thanks always, and submit to one another. So if you feel like you have too much time on your hands, where are you here in Ephesians 5, 14 through 21? Are you finding yourself faithful in that place? Are you adhering to the Kairos timing of God? Are you being effective in your servitude? when it comes to God's timing. And my last scripture, Acts 3, 19 through 21. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. What times of, so that times of refreshing may come from the Lord and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. This is the clarion call that God is sending out loud and clear because the timing right now is to repent. Repent and turn back to God. Repent of your sins. Repent so that the time of refreshing will come so that the Messiah can come, repent, repent, repent. That is the word of the Lord that he is saying now, even, and God showed me 
<clears throat> when I was in the military and there was um, the call, the Reveille, Reveille song would come on and we would have to come down in the morning. And so if you were late for that call, there were repercussions, maybe push-ups, maybe missing, you know, breakfast or lunch. Um, and these were things that, that would happen. But when he showed me this is so even more severe, detrimental, if we miss the clarion call, that means it's our destiny that is at stake. And so God doesn't want that. He wants us to, he gives us time. He gives us room to repent. We don't know how long that is but there's a time of repentance and it is now. And so God has sent out this clarion call. He sent out many warnings about the timing and the season of God. And so stewarding and stewarding well so that we don't lose what God has given us. This is the season and this is the timing um, that God is calling us to. And so God bless you. Thank you so much. That is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God, God bless you, Pastor Leslie. My Lord, what a word from the Lord. I know that you guys have been blessed. I have been truly, truly blessed. I will never look at a time the same. Amen. <laughs> and so she gave us some scripture. She gave us some word. Also, the warning of the Lord. God has been warning his people. So answer the call. Amen. So God bless you, Pastor Leslie, for the on-time word that you have delivered to the people of God on today. Just a few announcements we want to announce. We are in the month of stewardship and we are stewarding well. Amen. Hallelujah. So every Wednesday night, we have had our financial sessions. On last Wednesday, Minister Clarice Witherspoon was with us. And when I say she dropped some nuggets, my Lord, and some wisdom concerning finances, concerning how to save and things of that nature. And so she came in her own way and she laid the foundation for us to continue to build. And so on this Wednesday, we have... Uh, Evangelist LaVon, she will be with us on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And she's going to come in her own way and give us what God has given her when it relates to kingdom principles and finances. Amen. Hallelujah. And so that's what's happening here at Refresh City Church. On Sunday, we will be in person. I'm telling y'all, when you don't get to be in person Sunday, it make you feel some type of way. I've been feeling some type of way, but God has been faithful. So I get excited every Sunday when we get to come together, when we get to join with each other in worship and fellowship. And so invite your family, invite your friends. We'll be in Richmond, Texas at 1 p.m. And that's going to be on Sunday. Amen. Also, if you need prayer, if you have any prayer requests, you can type that in the chat, or if you're on Facebook, you can put that in the chat or send a direct message and someone will reach out to pray with you. We do not want to um, miss those that need prayer, someone to touch and agree with them. Also, um, the ways to give is on the screen. You can give by cash app at refresh, dollar sign, refresh city, or you can give by Zelle at info at refreshcity.org. If you want to sow into this ministry, also seed of 23 is still going strong. The Lord declares seed of 23 at the beginning of the year. And so what that pretty much means is you can give a seed that has the number 23 in it. <laughs> Amen. So you can give your seed here, give it at your church, wherever, just put in the seed, have an assignment for your seed. And I know that God is going to come through. Amen. So I think that is all the announcements that I have. Also, the Josiah Arise Prayer Brunch. Woo! 
I am the host, Aisha Pete, and it is kicking off on March 25th at 10 a.m. So grab your tickets. General admission is $40. So grab your tickets. You don't want to miss. The reformers are rising. The altars are coming down. God is speaking to his people. It is not a coincidence that all of a sudden we are all talking about the same thing because this is the heart of the father. The altars are coming down in your life. Amen. So we got to rise up and we got to do the work. That is all I have. We're going to release our Facebook. Um, those that have joined us on Facebook, we pray that your week is amazing. We pray that you can join us on Wednesday nights for the financial stewarding classes. Also, be sure to join us on Sundays if you like. And that's all we have. We thank God once again for you guys coming on and for having us. So at this time, we are going to release our Facebook audience. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Amen.